you want to create beautiful jewelry that is well made and recognizable as your own with the confidence that you have the skills to make it happen, in this video I'm going to show you part of my savvy artisan approach to gain better control and understanding of your torch and what happens when you heat your metal for the soldering process. Hi, I'm Melissa Muir. I'm a metalsmith, jeweler, and a teacher. In the last video I introduced you to my savvy artisan approach and why I have used this method to teach thousands of others how to make well-made jewelry with their own signature style. In case you haven't watched the first video yet, make sure you do that right now because we covered some important things and if you're serious about making recognizable jewelry, then you don't want to miss it. One step of the savvy artisan approach is what I call the savvy soldering method. And the goal of that is to get to know your torch. The first thing you need to do is to master your torch and your tools. In order to master them, you need to know about the torch, the differences, and when the best time to use one over the other is. Now, you can get away with using just one torch in your studio as long as you are able to control the type and size of flame. In my own studio, I have eight different torches so I can help students regardless of what they have at home in their own studio. Let's take a look at some of these torches and their differences and where I would choose one to use over the other. But first, it is important to know about the types of flames that the torches produce. Now, there are three main types of flames. We have an oxidizing flame, which is a higher mix of oxygen this is a very hot, tight, pointy flame and what I call a hissy flame. Not great for soldering or annealing. The next is a neutral flame. It has equal mix of both gas and an oxygen. The third is a reducing flame. This has a higher mix of gas that has a very soft envelope around a tight inner flame. Now the best type for flame for soldering is kind of a mix between reducing and neutral, but more towards that neutral. The first torch is our LH010. This is a little haughty butane torch. As you can see, it attaches directly to an eight ounce can of butane. These are usually found in the camping section. It features a large bushy flame, which is great for annealing, enameling, and soldering larger pieces. I don't know if you guys can see this on the video or not, but the flame comes all the way out to here. Now, it has a temperature of about 2300 degrees, a little more, and features a safety lock to prevent accidental ignition. Now, it also has a very large flame that is not very easily controlled. So this is going to be great for larger pieces, but you may not have quite the control that you would like. Now the next up is our little hottie Max Bolt. Now this guy is a workhorse. It is refillable and I personally prefer to use blazer butane in my studio, but you could use any kind of refined uh, butane and you should be okay. This features a really nice large flame. So there's a safety here that I would go ahead and put that down. Then I'm going to ignite the torch in order for me to keep the torch on. There's a little switch right here that will allow it to stay on and then I would switch it back to turn off the torch. So if I just hit my ignition here and then I'll lock it on and now I can let go. You guys can hopefully see like this flame actually comes out to about right here and with the sweet spot of our flame being about right here. So it's a nice large flame. This is going to allow you to do pieces up to about two and a half inches. Now while I'm able to control the gas that goes into my torch, which allows me to adjust the size of my flame, I am not able to adjust the type of flame, just the size. Now the next torch is our little hottie power bolt, this little white guy right here. And you guys might have seen me use this quite a bit in my studio and in my videos. And that is because it produces a nice, kind of a medium sized flame. I'm able to easily do pieces up to about one and a half to two inches with this. Just like the one before, it also is refillable. And again, I like to use that blazer butane in here. Just like the torch before, we also have a safety here to ignite. We're just going to push the button. If we want it to stay on, there's a little toggle switch right here. You just simply slide that and then you can let go. Again, you can see we have a nice large flame. There is a little point of adjustment here on the side where I can decrease or increase the size of my flame, but I'm again not able to change the type of flame that I have. To turn off this torch, I will simply slide that little toggle switch one more time. 
The next two torches fall into the micro torch category. So this is the little hottie Firebolt Micro. This is very similar to a blazer butane torch. So if you've ever used some of those, you'll recognize this one. It is again refillable. And this one has also an adjustable size for your flame. But in addition, you can also change the type of flame that you are working with. So in this case, to turn this on, there is no safety switch here, but I'm just going to open up the back end. So I'll just twist that open and then push to ignite. Now this torch has a very small flame. So even though I'm able to control my flame type, my flame is very small. This torch would be appropriate for a piece maybe up to one inch and you could be kind of pushing it there. In order for you to change the size, again, you can just increase or decrease how much gas it has. And then here on the top, we have a little turn dial that allows you to change the type of flame you have. So I can make this very, very bushy, which here we have one of our reducing flames. Not good for anything in jewelry, really, except for maybe lighting another torch, but I wouldn't do that. <laughs> and then we can take this all the way to an oxidizing flame. But again, oxidizing flames are not good for making jewelry either. So I can take this, open it up ever so slightly until I get a nice cone on my torch, but still have a soft envelope of, of oxygen around that. And this is my neutral flame, where I have equal amounts of both the gas and the oxygen. To turn this torch off, I just rotate my knob and cut off the gas supply, and that will turn off the torch. Our final micro torch is the Little Hottie Night Saber. Now there's also another one that is called a Silver Saber that looks very similar to this. It just happens to be silver. Now here's something interesting that happened with me and this particular torch. I made a judgment call, a very poor one, but a judgment call nonetheless. This looks like one of those torches you can buy for $5 at the discount hardware store. Let me tell you, there is a huge difference between this one and the $5 torch that you can buy at that discount hardware store. Thing being is that this one will actually hold its temperature, its flame, and the size and what you set it to, whereas some of the others are not going to be quite as reliable as that. So once again, we have a torch that is refillable and it has an adjustable flame size and that adjustable flame type. To light this torch, I'm going to move that little safety down push the button to ignite the torch, and then there is a little button here that I can push, and that will allow my torch to stay on. Again, we have a very small flame here, but again, it is adjustable. This torch would be able to handle a piece up to maybe an inch square. So again, great for small jobs, not so much for bigger pieces. To turn the torch off, I will just push this ignition button one more time and it will cut off the flow and allow your torch to turn off. Now the two little torches in my studio have such a small flame, but I typically use these for small jobs such as jump rings, rings, bezels, thin head pins, and soldering posts onto small earrings. So there are three other torches I have here in my studio and they all require some kind of gas or oxygen mix. Now the first torch I use is a MAP torch. Now this I also always use with a hose. Sometimes the hoses can be kind of difficult to find so I've included a link to this torch that I use here in my studio. This one happens to be a burns o -Matic, a TS-8000. Now there's one that looks just like this that is a T. Um, a TS 4000. That 4000 does not get anywhere near the kind of heat this is. Now this is a MAP torch. MAP tends to be kind of a dirty gas. Because of that, this can also oxidize some of your metals much faster. The thing that's really nice about this torch, you have a very hot flame. You also have a big flame. This is great for things like enameling or annealing or some of those larger types of projects that you might have. To light this torch, you just simply push this button here. Then to keep your torch going, you'll just push this little button. Now to turn this torch off, you're again going to push that little button here and that will turn this off. Now, things that are really good about this torch. Like I said, it's big, it's hot. However, you cannot adjust it. I mean, you can give it more gas or less gas and perhaps make it a little smaller, 
but that's the extent of it. You cannot change the type of flame that you have. Now my next torch is an acetylene torch. Now you can get torches that use acetylene and oxygen, but in my case, I have a torch that will allow the oxygen to be pulled in from the atmosphere. So this would be known as an acetylene air torch. Now this is similar to what you would find with a Smith Silversmith. So it's kind of along those same lines. However, this is a Goss, which if you've ever heard of a Presto light is very similar to that as well. Now there are different tips that you can purchase for these, just depending on what you need. The size number four is my go-to. To light this one, you are going to need a striker. So what I would do is turn on my gas and get that flowing and then ignite it with this. Now again, this is going to be a nice hot flame and I'm able to control my size, but not really so much the type of flame that I have. However, this is the perfect type of flame for the majority of the work that I do. So this is more of our neutral flame. We've got a nice sharp cone in here. We also have that enveloping um, flame around it, but it's not too bushy. So we don't have too much oxygen. We don't have too much gas. It's nice and neutral and it works really well for me. And again, I can change the type of flame. So to turn that off, I just rolled this back. To change the size of my flame rather, then all I need to do is swap out my tips, give it less um, gas. So you have a few different things that you can do to change that out. Now this does require a tank of gas. I have a B tank of gas and as you can see I also have it mounted or attached to my bench leg. In this case I'm using bungee cord. You can also use chains. You just want to make certain that it's nice and secure. Now the next torch that I use in my studio is a propane oxygen torch. Now this is a very small one. This one happens to be the Gentec version, which is okay, but it would be similar to a Smith Little torch. Now like I said, that I'm using propane and oxygen, however you could use acetylene and oxygen in this kind of a torch as well. The thing you want to remember is that when you use something like this, you always turn on your gas first and then you turn on the oxygen, and then you would turn the oxygen off and then the gas. So in this case, if I'm using propane, it's actually poop. Propane, oxygen, oxygen, propane. And that's the order that you want to use. To ignite this torch, I'm going to turn on my propane and light that, and then I will begin to add my oxygen and that will allow me to get whatever flame I need. Now this is a smaller flame, but it's a very, very hot flame. Some people work really well with this and there are multiple tips that you can use with this, but it's just gonna depend on what you need. I usually find that I do better with a little larger, bushier flame, but there are definitely times where something like this torch is very handy and necessary. To turn this off, I'm going to again turn off my oxygen and then follow with my propane. A common misconception when starting out is that because you are creating a small piece of jewelry, you need a small and a hot flame. A lot of people start off with a torch that is too small of a tip and too hot of a flame, which is definitely a recipe for disaster. When in fact, depending on your material, you actually need a larger broad flame to distribute that heat. Now that you have seen some of the torches that I use and what they are capable of, it is time to see them in action. Once you are comfortable with your torch, knowing how the flame works and how it is controlled, you can then begin to master it with just a few simple exercises. In my upcoming Freeform Cuff workshop, we will go through multiple projects together to ensure you are comfortable with the techniques to stretch your wings and to help you find your own unique style and voice in the pieces that you are creating. And if that is something you are interested in, make sure you click on the link under this video and put your name on my early bird waitlist. Everyone on the early bird waitlist will get access to the registration link the night before my program opens up to the public. So again, make sure you put your name and your email address on that list so that I know you're interested. Just click on the link below that video, enter your details, and your spot is reserved within that early bird list, and you are eligible then to get early access to the program. For now, take some time with your torch. 
See what it is capable of. Are you able to control your flame type? How about the size? In the next video, I will show you some of the exercises I use to teach my students torch control and to get them ready for soldering larger and more complex designs. These exercises are also going to allow you to determine whether or not you may need a different torch. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Go experiment with your torch to see what it can do. I can't wait to show you what I've got in the next video. I hope that you guys will join me and I will see you then. Bye.